Chinese financial entrepreneur Tang Weizhen, persecuted and imprisoned, diligently studied and reflected during his time in prison, eventually making significant discoveries. This article was written on April 17, 2015, while he was still in prison. Tang Weizhen first entered the financial forum on the Literature City website on July 23, 2002, when the financial markets were at a low point. He quickly shared his views and opinions, surprising many forum users who saw him as a financial genius. Some even dubbed him the Chinese Buffett, while others called him the Chinese Soros. They believed that having their own Buffett, or Soros, regardless of which god he was, was a source of pride when wealth for the Chinese community. Later, through careful observation and research, someone claimed to have made a significant discovery that the mysterious Toronto-based Chinese businessman was none other than Tang Weijin. For a long time, forum users debated passionately, forming two camps, those who supported Toronto's Chinese and those who opposed them. A few years later, Tang Weijin published a book titled The Wealth Path of the Chinese Buffett, which gained worldwide recognition. By January 2009, the Chinese Buffett hosted the second North American Chinese Wealth Summit and the Chinese New Year Gala at Toronto City Hall, where he demonstrated his quantitative trading theories, including the 1% theory, to investors and the media. His career reached its peak. However, within a few months, like the situation with Huawei and TikTok in the United States, the Chinese Buffett came under investigation by the Ontario Securities Commission, OSC. In March 2009, a former police officer from the OSC claimed to have made a significant discovery and declared Tang Weijin as the Chinese Madoff. At the time, Tang did not understand why the police were knowledgeable about Madoff. The OSC officer, who was unfamiliar with finance, confidently told the court that the Chinese Buffett is the Chinese Madoff, calling it one of the largest financial fraud cases in Canada. The court then froze Tang Weijin's company assets and halted all his transactions, including legitimate securities and forex trading accounts. This investigation caused a significant uproar among investors leading to even more heated debates and divisions within the community, far more intense than the previous disputes on Literature City. The controversy spread from Tang's investors to the Chinese community, throughout North America, and even to China. From the OSC to the police, monitors, and courts, and eventually to jail cells, Tang Weijun faced unprecedented scrutiny. The scale of the investigation both in scope and magnitude, was enormous, making it one of the most extensive cases in Canadian history. A publicly listed company, Sino Forest Corporation, which raised 30 billion CAD and had a market value of 60 billion CAD, was also investigated by the OSC under similar charges, consuming substantial resources and facing severe challenges. Typically, the OSC would rather avoid going to court due to the complexities and costs involved in financial cases, which require expert witnesses and large teams of lawyers. Sinoforest spent over a billion CAD on its defense, and the OSC's costs were no less. The trial did not go to court, but was handled internally by the OSC, with both sides suffering significant losses aiming to close the case by the end of 2015. Financial cases consume a tremendous amount of manpower and resources, and both the OSC and the courts rely heavily on taxpayers' money. Despite the high stakes, they must defend their reputations, leading to fierce battles. The OSC initially intended to intimidate and destroy Tang Weijun's reputation and career, assuming that this would be the end. However, Tang, a determined Hunan native, was not easily scared off. As a result, the OSC was forced to continue its investigation, determined to bring him to justice. They spent years on the case, 
but lacked sufficient resources and expertise, resorting to using the police to enforce their will. Using legal experts and the power of the courts and prisons, the OSC sought to coerce an innocent man into confessing, raising serious questions about the fairness and justice of Canada's legal system. By employing illegal means, they turned the Chinese Buffett into a Chinese Madoff. They believed that once Tong Weijun was imprisoned, they could rest easy. But it wasn't that simple. The real drama was yet to unfold. Tang Weijun emerged stronger, forged through adversity and struggle.